Apparently, he's enhanced Deion Sanders so much in training sessions that Shaw says Deion, at 37 years old, is running a 4-3-8-40 on grass. Shaw told uh, ESPN News Four Quarters program Friday, starring David Lloyd, that Dion is definitely coming back to play in the NFL, presumably as a Baltimore Raven. Ravens head coach Brian Billick said this week he hopes to get 25 to 30 snaps a game out of Dion as a Ravens nickelback. Though eight-time Pro Bowler Dion Sanders was not on the practice field Tuesday, the Ravens were anxiously awaiting his impending arrival. Can't wait to see you know Dion walk through those doors, you know, and I mean it's. It's, 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 a, it's a blessing for him to be here, and I'm sure all of us are going to enjoy it. And it'll be something we'll never forget because it only comes around once. This guy is a Hall of Famer. He has a Super Bowl ring. Uh, he brings all the credentials. Uh, we're not known to be much of a group of wallflowers, and, and uh, neither is he, so it should be a natural uh, mix. He's always going to be the man. Everybody on the, that steps on the football field with Dion is going to understand who they are they're playing with, even myself. I'm actually, you know, glad and honored, you know, to, to, to be playing with Dion. You know, I mean, it's a dream growing up to be him. While questions have been raised about the effectiveness of a 37-year-old former retiree on the field, the Ravens have no doubt Sanders will make his presence felt, especially among his younger teammates. We've got some guys here that know Boy, what a resource. I can't imagine our younger players, even our, our players that have been here for a while and, and have a lot of playing time but are still in the, in the infancy of their careers, aren't just going to hang on every word and watch and listen to what this guy has to offer. You know, he's just going to teach them young secondary guys how to just, you know, deal with people so much, not from an athletic standpoint, but from, but from the studying and all of that. You know, seeing it from his eyes, you know, from the back end and seeing it from my eyes from the front seven, I think that has to be a great compliment. Dion, I'm pretty sure, can, can give me a lot of helpful hints as far as how to guess routes and, and when to guess routes. And, and maybe more, I hear he's a, a true student of the game. And, I mean, he, he, he may even help me in that area, help me study receivers a lot more to anticipate these things. I just feel questions. Uh, Dion, at any point during your physical preparation, did you think maybe this is not going to happen? Never. Never. Not once. I prepare to win. I prepare to dominate. I prepare to conquer, and I prepare to win it all. That's one of the reasons I'm here. Yeah, we heard a lot about your training with Tom Shaw. <clears throat> was there a point where the exact opposite, where you, where you said, man, this is it, I'm definitely coming back? Was there a breakthrough in training where, where you, you found that out? What was it? It was definitely breakthroughs. It was breakthroughs uh, in the little town I live in in Prosper. We have like a 40 to 50 yard indoor facility with turf on it and uh, just covering receivers. I felt like it was 80, 90,000 people inside the little stadium. And I just felt the adrenaline, I felt the fire, I felt that passion, I felt that dog in me, and I knew right then. Talk about your relationship with Ray. Give us the genesis of that, Florida State, uh, Miami, guys. When did you first meet Ray and become friends with Ray? Oh. I don't know the exact date, but uh, I love him. I love him. I, I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for these two guys sitting uh, flanked next to me, as well as Ray Lewis and Corey Fuller. I wouldn't be here, certainly, on any other team in the NFL. Why are you coming back? Because I want an opportunity to win it all, and that's it to win it all. Dion, would you come back with Ray and, and uh, Corey and you know, Brian and Ozzie if you didn't think this team could get there, if this was a 6-10 you know, no. team or something? No, definitely not. You got to understand, I walked away from how many millions of dollars over in Washington for the same situation that I didn't think the team could get it done. If you weren't sitting here right now, where would you be? What would you be doing? Coaching my fifth and sixth grade team. Let me get a, a, a misunderstanding. One of our beloved um, reporters I think he mentioned on one of the networks that I had nothing to do since I left CBS. I have one infomercial on with an app, Sizzle with Body by Jake. I have another one airing in September. <laughs> <laughs> I have a television show that I walked away from that's uh, uh, with uh, Robert Ro uh, Rodriguez, the comedian. I have another show, a uh, syndicated show, radio show that we're negotiating with right now. I put it off for another year. I have plenty of things to do. My fifth and sixth grade football team. So don't make it seem like I had nothing to do, whoever wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful if, Arthur. If CBS had offered you a million more, would you be here today, though? You what? never know. I trust God, and I trust his ways. I really trust him with all my heart, and everything was strategic. That's why I didn't go back to CBS. It was more than just money. Yeah. It really was. Yeah, making a commitment to a team is a big strain, obviously, on your family. How much did you talk to your wife about it, and what did she say when you first talked to her about coming back? My family is excited. My wife is excited. She said, baby, if you're going to do it, just do it. Do it. I mean, represent us like you know you can. Just do it.
Is Baltimore getting the whole primetime package, kick returns, and the whole deal? From I what want to get everything. I want to get a little bit of offense, too. <laughs> <laughs> everything. You know, we... Yeah, hopefully so. <laughs> hopefully so. I talked about winning the championship, and, and that's something that, unfortunately, he couldn't do at the end. You've got a couple. Why come back to win here? And why would this be different, a different kind of championship for you? It's, it's just different. I, it's really hard to... Uh, put a title on it why why it's different but it's just different it's something that I went to Washington to do and something I left without doing without completing I want that third somebody block Reed blitz coming they pick it up and the pass caught by Lavernius Coles Dion was there and swatted at it but Coles did a tremendous job to keep his concentration and make that catch. Deion Sanders didn't finish this play. He's got him covered, but he's in there and knocks the ball out. But watch, he doesn't finish. He steps back. If he finishes it... He keeps trying to put the ball up in the air. Brunel airs this one out. Coles double covered. Deion picked up. Dion with the interception. <laughs> that is number 49 in his career. Dion Sanders has the greatest ball skills of any defensive back I have ever seen in my life. He finds the ball so well. Watch this. They're just trying to take a shot on Lavernius Cole. You don't think Dion can run? Look at him keep. Look at him go up and get that ball with the soft hands. Now he says, "Look, look at him go get it like a receiver. He's better than most receivers." You know what I like afterwards when he gets it. He's going to put it up in the air and show you the trophy. I have it. I, yeah, this, but, this but what? Is fine. He turns around, looks to see where Lavernius yeah. Cole's is, knows he's not close, and he says, "Look what I've got." I think they'd rather have their offense staying on the bench. Church of a two-game winning streak. Dion would have something to say about that. They played without Jamal Lewis. Chester Taylor filled in nicely. 89 yards rushing. There's Dion picking off through Bledsoe on the screen attempt, taking it to the house. 10 for your Ravens. 20, 23rd career touchdown for Dion. Ninth time he's returned an interception for a score. So how did it feel to get back in the house? Good, man. He really did. It's so funny because at uh, breakfast this morning, I told the guys, I said, guys, now when I get in the end zone, stand back. Let me dance. First, then you congratulate me. <laughs> True story. Not gonna Fourth quarter. Ravens leading 17-6. Bills trying to come closer. Bledsoe to the end zone. No. Picked off by Sanders. Bledsoe threw four picks. He fumbled one. Didn't play their game. And then Deion Sanders off the punt. Mike Reese. 93-yard touchdown. First Browns opening kickoff touch return for a touchdown in 14 years. Second quarter, 10-9 Browns. Deion Sanders left the game. Injured. This was going. Meanwhile, the game is 28-17. Sean Price is gone. Made one carry. Didn't Mel Barr used to wear 24? And that's Deion Sanders chasing him. And, and you know, in his day, Deion Sanders would have caught anybody in this league, boom. Later, beginning of the fourth quarter, and did you remember really that he was playing? We haven't said this since what? 2000 what? Prime time. Prime time. Prime time. Prime time. Crap. Fumble time. <laughs> Dion with a pick. It was just good to say it. Mm -hmm. He just he's running up the field. Making Sorry, Green Bay Packers have it. Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback. He plays for Brett Favre from the 45 yard line. Mm -hmm. And this will be Noah Herring. A nice run inside the 40 to the 37. So Deion Sanders intercepted Brett Favre before. And, of course, mutual admiration society between two greats, one offense, one defense. The pick coming here, Favre launching one, and then Sanders going back for the 53rd interception of his career. And there it is. No player as old as Sanders has ever intercepted a player as old as Favre, and you'll be reading about two one to three. It was twenty-four to three at the half. Among the things that happened tonight, Brett Favre was intercepted by his old teammate from his days with the Falcons back in 1991. Deion Sanders with career interception number 53. Kyle Bowler, big night. Deion Sanders walking away. Kyle Bowler, come back here, Deion. Great game for you. Picks off uh, your old teammate, Brett yeah. Favre. Tell us about that. Oh, it was. It was 
I'll tell you what, it's no glory in picking off old folk like Brett. It was, it's just a privilege to be on the same field. And if this is both of our last game on Monday Night Football, I just, I just love being on the same platform. What about this guy, man? I'm so proud of my quarterback. Well, you left the door open there. I know you told me it's more important for you to be daddy. Is this prime right. time's last prime time up here? I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to announce that <laughs> right now. But I, I, I do have five beautiful kids and a beautiful wife that yeah, I, I may need to see about, you know? What about this guy? I'm what did so he show you? Of him. I'm, so proud, I'm so proud of him. You know, people talking junk about him, down on him, but we always talk like, keep your confidence up. And he went out there tonight and displayed, if you give him a little time, this, these are the kind of things that he could accomplish.